Hi guys, Sarah here at Craft Habit, and today I'm gonna to give you an update on my summer dress challenge. This is a teal dress. I love this color. It's probably one of the boldest colors of the dresses that I got. Um, and this one I had planned to wear to my cousin's wedding, which I did. Congratulations, cousins <laughs> who got married. Um, but I wanted to show you what I worked on. With this, I did um, um, embroidery on where the pockets used to be. So all these dresses had started out with patch pockets sort of right on the hips, and that's where I wanted my embroidery to go. So I took the patch pockets off, um, which was fine. It did leave a little bit of a fade line. You can kind of see this, where the stitching was there, but that actually was helpful for me um, in knowing where to place my embroidery designs, and especially since I did, I'm doing it on two sides of the dress, I know they're gonna match up pretty well. So the wedding's already over. I managed to finish one embroidery before the wedding, and it was just a cute little decoration, and now I'm working on the other one. Um, and this one's different because I learned a lot during this one. I did a lot of things maybe not the best way. So I'll kind of talk you through what happened. <laughs> so this is a really lovely pattern. It's called Folk Garden. It's from an uh, embroidery designer, uh, Stitcherama, and I really like it. I've been wanting to use it. It reminds me of a lot of Scandinavian patterns on things from my youth. Um, it's really cute, but this, uh, when I went to iron this on, it's an iron-on transfer, um, it has very fine lines, and this fabric is so dark, the iron-on didn't really transfer well. So what I did is I took some parchment paper, laid it over the design, traced it, cut it out, taped it to the fabric, and then just stitched through the paper on all of it, um, which seemed like a really clever idea at the time. Uh, and it looked great as I was stitching it because it was on this nice like white paper. Um, but then things got a little sideways. Um, I had this idea that I would stitch through the paper and then I would do a cool video reveal where I just took the paper and just shh, pulled it off and the beautiful embroidery would be revealed underneath. Um, that, that didn't happen so much. Um, the fabric here, this fabric is actually a fairly loose weave and because I was on this loose weave and I was stitching through paper, I didn't pull my stitches real taut and I couldn't really see what was going on underneath the paper. So when I went to pull it off, um, I'll drop a video in here that you'll see. Um, I was very excited about the big reveal, but as I started pulling off, it started pulling the stitches loose, not out, but loose. Um, so I had to slow down and pull the paper off bit by bit. And there was a long time I spent with tweezers getting little pieces of the paper out. Uh, regardless, it still turned out remarkably well for all of that. I think it's cute. But when I went to do the other side, I thought, let's be a little more professional about this. So I went back and found my paper pattern for the iron-on transfer, and I traced it with the Sublime Stitching um, iron-on um, pen. And that extra ink from the Sublime Stitching pen really worked. I was able to get a good transfer onto this fabric. Another thing that helped is that I ironed on some interfacing behind this fabric, just a thin iron-on interfacing. I did that first, then I did the transfer, and that together seemed to really work. So now it's much easier for me to stitch it. I'm just stitching on lines that are already there. Um, I also decided to split my threads. When I did the first one, I'll admit, I just wanted to get it done. I was moving fast. So with that, every stitch is all six strands of six strand embroidery floss but some of these little detailed things really needed to be finer. So this time around in the sunflower, oh, there's my needle <laughs> waiting for the rest of it. Uh, on the sunflower and details on the birds, I split down my thread so I was using three strands instead of six, and that just gives you a little more maneuverability, a little more um, detail there. So this one's looking a lot nicer. I'm happy with it. Uh, maybe when it's done, I'll pull these out and do it again this nice way. We'll, we'll see. We'll see um, how self-judgmental I feel when I'm done and if my fingers hurt. Um, anyway, but I'm really pleased with how this one's turning out now to just sort of taking my time. Uh, this one I stitched mostly on an airplane and in the car. Uh, and I realized I could have stitched it on a boat too. And I'm now feeling sad that I didn't take that opportunity when it presented itself. Um, but this one I stitched on the train. Yes, I've been traveling a lot this summer. It's great. <laughs> um, I love the train. Take the train when you can. So this one's stitched on a train and then like in a chair. Um, so when these are done, I am going to do one more thing to this dress. Uh, I used this 
bright corally red color in the stitching and the design. I like it a lot. And that means I can add my favorite trim we have in the store. This is a coral ribboned fringe trim. Um, I really wanted to use this on something and I wasn't sure what, but now I think I'm going to add it along the bottom hem of my dress. It'll make it super festive. It'll coordinate with the coral that's in there um, and just give it like one more oomph. It'll be a real party dress, I think. Um, so I'm gonna do one more video later in a few weeks and kind of show you everything I've done with these dresses, um, what I've learned, if I do it again. Um, yeah, so that's what's gonna come up. I hope that you have enjoyed seeing me struggle through these. Um, and if you are an embroiderer, I hope that you have learned a little bit from my mistakes. Um, but if not, go make your own mistakes because you can learn from them too. <laughs> I'll see you later. Happy crafting!